Coming up on Good Morning Texas, a look at some spooky spots right here on campus. Some of UT students' biggest fears. And a look at how to make your jack-o'-lantern the talk of the town. All this and more coming up on Good Morning Texas. And I'm Alejandra Gonzalez. With us today is our weather anchor, Julia Farrell. And news anchor, Nadine Bodwins. Welcome. Tragedy struck at North Austin High School yesterday afternoon. A 17-year-old male died from a self-inflicted gunshot at Lanier High School. Austin ISD officials placed the school on lockdown after reports initially cited one student cutting another student. However, the lockdown was lifted an hour later after and students were dismissed early. Austin ISD officials have not released the name of the student. This is really scary because it's hitting so close to home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just think it's so sad. I can only imagine what it felt like to be there and to watch that. You know, if you were around him and watched that happen, that's just terrible. Exactly. It's, it's really traumatizing, but we send our best wishes to the family. We do. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love going to check out a new restaurant. And that's exactly what Kian Gass and Marisa Bel Cardazzo did when they checked out West Campus's newest hotspot. Take a look. All right, we got our pizza. We can get a little side. All right, family, we're hungry and ready to eat. Want to show Tyler and show us what you have on the menu? Absolutely, let's go. All right, let's, let's go. go. First, let's start off with the heart of this restaurant. All this right. is our kitchen. We've got my boys here. This is Gabe and Jacob. They are making some pizzas for you. I'm excited. So what are we what, what are we have in front of us right now? This is going to be our buffalo chicken pizza. It's really, really good. Our buffalo sauce is unique. It's not like anything else. Definitely not out of the bottle. Tons and tons and tons of cheese. Lactose intolerance, beware. <laughs> this one's a smoking Austin pizza. It's really unique. It's got sausage, fresh basil. Um, it's really fresh, light, and uh, different from any other pizza you've had. Awesome. I am excited for both of these. I'll just dig in right over here. Marissa, go join me. You know, there are some pizza places around here. So what makes what makes Tower Pizza the place that we got to go to from now on? Well, Tower Pizza is not a chain. This is a mom and pop restaurant, and the recipes are decades and decades old. They're proven to be excellent. They're uh, East Coast based recipes. So they're going to be a little bit different than, you know, your Domino's, your Papa John's. Yeah, already, I can tell. Yeah. This is a very interesting taste of this buffalo. Our, our kitchen is the heart of our house in a lot of different ways. They take a lot of pride in what we do, fresh ingredients. They take the time to make things right. And they're all characters as well, so <laughs> it's a good experience. So obviously right now you guys are in the heart of West Campus. And, you know, it's a pretty popular place for students. So um, why, the, why here? You know, why now? You know, as, as cheesy as it sounds, why not now? Um, you know, there's a great need for something unique and different in the West Campus area. I think everyone's kind of been through what's been here for years and years and years. You, you get tired of eating the same places every other day. Um, and we've got a very different, unique experience and perspective to bring to the campus area. Star Pizza is located right on the corner of 20th and Rio Grande, right across the street from Flutter. We're gonna have a bit more to eat, but until next time, King Gas. Good morning, Texas. Delicious. I'm a little bit jealous I couldn't go with them because I love pizza and I could just, I'd yeah. go to town there. See, I'm not really a pizza person, but that, that looked really good. Yeah, I could totally go for some breakfast pizza right now. Forget the tacos. And pizza has always been one of my favorite foods, so it's definitely some place that I'd be interested in trying. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good. According to the Consumer Sentinel Network database, college-age students are most likely to fall victim to identity theft. Adults in their 20s are targeted because of their clean record and good credit. But not only do students have to worry about financial identity, but their di digital identity can be stolen too. We spoke with Kamari Carter, a UT senior who has frequently had her pictures and videos used online by others. She said she is frequently contacted by people who have been fooled by these fake profiles and said the idea is almost flattering but really makes her feel insecure. There's an image of you out there that 
people are not going to be able to match with the real you. Connor said she reported people after she found out about their fake profiles. To prove her identity, she had to make videos with her name handwritten on a sheet of paper. So that's, that's so crazy. You think, you see it on TV, but you, you don't really realize it. it does happen in real life, and it happens to a lot of people. Yeah, I've never heard of that before. I actually have no idea what catfish is. Like, I know that they, they brought that speaker here and all that mm. stuff. I have no idea. I don't either. I've never heard of it before. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's the first time. Well, well, I mean, I guess you can get an idea from that story that it's, it's people basically taking your online identity and pretending to be you, and it's, it's, it's crazy that, that it happens. That is crazy. Mm. And from one very real scare to another, in a new Good Morning Texas segment, let's take a look at Littlefield Home. For those who don't know, Littlefield Home is supposed to be haunted. Let's take a look. The Littlefield Home belonged to George Washington Littlefield and his wife, Alice Littlefield. In 1883, they moved to Austin, and 24 years later, Major Littlefield became a member of the Board of Regents of UT. Throughout his life, he donated many gifts to the university like the Littlefield Fund for Southern History, the Wren Library, and the legendary Littlefield Home. Now a landmark, the Victorian mansion has been rumored to be haunted by Mrs. Littlefield. One story claims that Major Littlefield would lock Alice in the attic when he left, left out of fear that the Yankees would grab her. There, it is said that she was attacked by bats and that her ghost roams the attic waiting for her husband to return. Others say that the ghost of Alice can be heard playing the piano on the first floor. The house is now used by the University of Texas Development Board. Whether or not Littlefield is actually haunted remains a mystery. That's so, that's, that's cool but scary. It's, it's like we have a little haunted house on campus. I love the Littlefield home. I wish I could have been there to do that because I, I walk by that every day and I look through the window and I just picture what it's like on the inside. So I'm really glad that I got to see it because I've always wanted to. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to handle that, like <laughs> living with a ghost. That's so scary. I know. And I know that there's like a lot of places on the UT campus that are considered haunted. So I think it's both interesting but also really scary at the yeah. same time. Exactly. It's really spooky. That just sounds scary. Now, we all have them, fears that we just can't get over. We went out to ask UT students what they fear the most. Right now, not getting into the bears. bears. I don't know, crazy bears. Um, talking about fears, I'm actually terrified of bugs, guys. Like, bugs. I can't handle it. Every single time I walk outside, I'm like traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say that my biggest fear is probably flying. I mean, every time I'm on a plane, I'm always like on the edge of the, like on the edge of my seat. So heights are definitely a big fear for me. Oh, yeah. I'm actually kind of scared to say mine on air because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get some ridicule for it, but I am terrified of clowns. I had, in, when I was younger, my friends in high school, well, I wasn't that much younger, but my friends in high school had a clown chase me around my oh, neighborhood, oh, and I was so scared. I cried. I was 13 years old, and I cried. Oh, <laughs> so Halloween's going to be fun for you with all it's, those it scary never clowns? Is. <laughs> it never is. <laughs> well, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned for this week's weather forecast. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now for your local Austin news. Nadine? Thanks, Alejandra. The jury has been seated and the testimony will begin in the Yazdi murder trial. The trial began yesterday afternoon. Fred Yazdi is the man charged with shooting and killing a Texas State student last year. Yazdi allegedly shot Enrique Riccio three times after he wrecked his car and wandered onto Yazdi's property looking for help in February of 2012. Investigators say Riccio was drinking with a buddy and left the scene to avoid a DWI. The trial is said to last until the middle of next week. And an Austin Police Department detective is suspended after posting sensitive law enforcement material on his personal Facebook page. 
Police Chief Art Acevedo dismissed Detective David Lawrence Davis from work because Davis violated APD policy. Davis posted a composite sketch of a suspect and photos of interrogations at a crash site on his page. His suspension will last 10 days. And of course, we heard earlier about the suicide at Lanier High School yesterday. UT psychology professor Dr. Michael Telch says that there are multiple ways for those poor kids to cope. He says it's common for people who have experienced trauma to show a range of emotions like anger, sadness, and sometimes even shame. He says the most important thing is to talk to these kids and make sure to keep an eye on them. Withdrawing from people, extracurriculars, or a sudden drop in grades may indicate a bigger issue. And that's all I have. Thanks, Nikki. Of course, we do hope everyone the best to cope with something that's just so sad. But on a more positive note, Julia, the weather has been humid lately. Is it going to stay that way? Well, the weather in Austin has been absolutely beautiful these past few days. However, the rain this weekend put a damper on ACL, causing the cancellation of the last day. It seems that the weather will continue on into the week as well, with temperatures finally getting a bit chillier. Well, grab your umbrella and your raincoat if you're heading out the door this morning. It's going to be another rainy, muggy day in Austin. We've got a 70% chance of rain this morning. Showers will become more frequent throughout the day with only a 50% chance of rain later this evening. You can expect nearly half an inch of rainfall throughout the day, so don't forget those rain boots. With a high of 59 degrees and a low of 52 degrees, be sure to bring a light jacket with you as it may get a little chilly outside. Unfortunately, the chance of rain will still be lingering this upcoming weekend, so make sure that you are well prepared, especially if you have outdoor plans. There is a 50% chance of rain on Friday and a 60% chance of rain on Saturday. Temperatures will be warming up slightly with a high of 73 and a low of 52. On Sunday, the rain will look like it will be clearing up, so we can look forward to partly cloudy skies and a beautiful fall day at 75 degrees. Well, I know I'm, I'm excited for that cold weather, but the, the, the cold and the rain just don't mix well for me. Yeah. I know we need the rain, but I'm really hoping it doesn't rain this weekend because mm -hmm. I have some outdoor plans and I don't want them to get ruined. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like we've had enough rain for right now. Yeah. Now, don't go anywhere because after the break, we'll be talking about how you can fit into your Halloween costume while still enjoying those traditional Halloween snacks. Stay tuned for more Good Morning Texas. Well, Halloween is almost here, and I know that I've been working into getting into my Halloween costume. So today we will show you how to enjoy those yummy Halloween snacks guilt-free. Now, um, the first snack that we have um, is the melon brains. And as you can see, um, they carved the melon into the shape of a brain to give it that like spooky feel, but it's still healthy, you know, you're eating a fruit and it replaces candy and you know it can uh, satisfy that sweet tooth of yours. Okay, so the second snack that we're gonna be talking about is called Apple Mouth and these are great because they're really healthy, they're a great alternative to candy, but um, they're also very tasty and they're easy to make so I feel like making them is just half the fun. And then we have the carrot and dips, and this one, uh, this one's really fun. It looks like a hand coming out of the ground. It's simply just some carrots with almonds at the end of them, and just placed in any dip. And it's, it looks, it's really interesting and fun, and it's healthy, so you don't have to worry about all the calories from that candy when you can be eating something that's delicious and fun. And then we have a veggie pizza that I guess it looks like a mummy. Uh, I, I never really had problems eating my vegetables, but I feel like if I were a little kid on Halloween and it was super festive and they put it into a pizza, which is always delicious, it would just be perfect. I'd, I'd eat it. <laughs> so I guess, I guess the main thing that we, we get coming across all these different types of healthy alternatives for Halloween candy is, is definitely the presentation because, I mean, we know healthy food is not always super good. It's not as good as candy, obviously, but it's, when you make it look fun, it's, it's funner to eat. Exactly. And it's, it's that experience of making it right. and then the experience of eating it too. Exactly. So. 
And now when we come back, here's an exclusive look on how to carve the perfect Halloween pumpkin. Welcome back. For the past few weeks, Good Morning Texas has shown you how to make the most out of those wonderful fall pumpkins. Now Alejandra and Nadine and I will show you how to be the talk of the town with your pumpkin carving skills. So last week we showed you how to make some nice pumpkin treats and this week we're going to go back to the basics and show you how to carve a pumpkin. So all you need to do that are some pumpkins and some carving tools. Now you can go to the store and buy the ones that come in a little package or you can go the cheap college kid way which is what we're doing and use a butter knife and a spoon. Alright, let's get this started. So the first thing we want to start out by doing is if you have a pen or a sharpie make a lid and cut the lid off so you can empty the contents of the pumpkin so you have the hollow inside and then you can also use that same pan to draw a design onto the pumpkin to carve out as well. So we got a little bit of a head start. We're already kind of halfway through cutting our lids off, but. You definitely want to carve uh, your pumpkin outside where making a mess is okay, because sometimes this stuff does get pretty messy. And you probably should take off jewelry, which I didn't do, obviously. I'm gonna have fun cleaning that off later. <laughs> but as soon as you get the lid cut, we're just gonna scrape out all the little, the pumpkin insides with our spoon. You can save the pumpkin seeds and roast them, which I think Madeline and I are gonna do. The hardest part for me of carving a pumpkin is coming up with what I want to carve. Well, you know, pumpkin carving has always been one of my favorite Halloween pastimes. I remember always going to the pumpkin patch with my family and picking out a pumpkin and carving like a funny face into it. Yeah, pumpkin, the pumpkin farms are always really fun to go to because you want to get the best looking pumpkin, but the biggest one too. And, and carving it is something else. It's, it's really hard to do, but it's so fun and you can really get super creative with it. I think my only pumpkin farm was H-E-B, so <laughs> we'd kind of dig through the crate and yeah. find one that wasn't yeah. dirty, but my mom was really adamant about you have to make sure you get every seed out, and she was a perfectionist. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's it for us today. Thanks for tuning in. For more Good Morning Texas throughout the week, you can follow us on Twitter at GoodMorningTX. We hope you have a wonderful Wednesday.